Hello. What's going on, Rockstar? How you doing? Doing very well. It's been a long time, mister. Yeah, I know. Definitely been a long time indeed. Yeah, there's there's rumors that there was like this lockdown, like this this big old disease took over the world since the last time we talked. And I go, nah, I just talked with Paul last week. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been a it's been a long time coming here. I know um, it's wild these last three years, Jude. Yeah, it's been wild. Look at your personal life. Look at how it has universally grown. It has been so fun watching you grow into this beauty of energy. Mm, I really, um, it's it's been actually a bit surreal. I think just um, after the pandemic, especially just the, um, I think just the time of healing that it's in, um, I think that everybody's ready for that coming back together sort of vibration. And I think we've all sort of been prepared for these times. So yeah, it's been pretty surreal. You've answered the call in so many different ways, in the way of speaking the word as well as sharing the word through through lyrics of songs. And I, I love the way that you allow the universe to work with you. Yeah, it's um, it's really interesting just the way that the divine design sort of is, is flowing. And I think that this is just it. Like, we've been prepared for these times. I think that we're living, you know, in some of the most profound times as a human being. And many scientists, you know, are talking about the sixth mass extinction even. And I think we all are sort of waking up to the fact that um, there's just a lot of things that have happened in order for us to get to where we're at right now. And it's a, it's a gift to be alive. How are you able to put this into music? Do you, do you pull from the darkness like comedians pull for their jokes? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this is just it. Like, I know, um, I, you know, just to be very frank, I actually was pretty, was pretty uh, I thought that human beings had sort of come a lot further um, in, you know, in my own ignorance, let's just say. And um, the fool that I am, I know that I pulled from the darkness in 2020 into 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, wrote my eighth album. And it was really, um, it was probably one of the most uh, profound albums that I've ever written just to pull from that space that, you know, was so hard on so many people uh, transitioning and so many people sick and just the way that people were handling and, you know, dividing, you know, in so many ways, the polarities. And I just pulled from that and I really just connected to God and uh, did my thing with God. And this album came out of me and it was incredible. And it's the album that's actually kind of making its waves around the world right now. And yeah. it's spheres of love. You, you talk about the space and, and, and utilizing the energy of that space. Don't you think that the lockdown gave creative people the space? No, there was no race to hurry up and get done. We had all the time to make it right. Yeah, and it's really interesting because it was sort of like this massive pause in, I think, it was almost like a reset. Um, it's a reset of so many things. It was a reset of, I think, where we've been, what we have learned from where we've been, kind of to where we're at. And kind of really reflecting and contemplating where we're going um, individually and collectively. And I think that this is the thing, you know, we learned a lot through the pandemic and I think we're going to be learning about what happened in that pause for probably, the, I think, I mean, for at least a couple decades. <laughs> yeah. I spent some time with Kirsten Grind, uh, who is uh, pretty big when it comes to the knowledge of the banking system that seems to be plaguing the world again. And I asked her the question, right. is it possible that we are the second greatest generation of all time? Because Paul, without artists like yourself, we can find no peace. We, people, they, they, they look at religion and they run. They look at uni uh, you know, universal speaking and they run. And it's like, quit running and start listening. The artists are bringing the peace that they feel. Mm. Yeah, and I think that this is just it. Like, art is having a renaissance right now in a way that it's, it's not had in a very long time. And I think that, you know... For me, I've always kind of said, you know, uh, you know, the fame thing has seemed, well, it seems to dwindle more as time goes on because I think what's happening is as consciousness rises, as awareness becomes more, you know, focused on, you know, the quality of what people are creating as creators, I think what's happening is the appetite is changing. Mm -hmm. And I think people are really ready for a different kind of art, a different kind of response you know, a, a different kind of reflection to happen. And I think that's kind of what's going on right now is that we're, you know, as creators and co-creators, um, we're actually sort of upping the ante on what we're interested in. And I think that, you know, in these times as, as we shift out of the dark sort of ages, if you will, into the light, I think that artists are actually, you know, the ones that are creating peace, love, joy, happiness, and prosperity are actually starting to be recognized for that thing that, 
really is, a, is an intimate relationship with another soul um, in art or through art. To plant your lyrics and that beautiful piano into an album is one thing. To take it to a live audience, what is that like for you? Because I, I always want to step into the zone of where you are when you're in front of people. Yeah, that was, I have to tell you, I, I sang, um, I was just actually just announced today that I'm going to be in Sedona actually singing um, with uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's uh, very famous for the biology of belief. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's an incredible man, and he talks about so many beautiful things about biology and belief kind of coming together with um, epigenetics. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's really cool. And I shared the stage with him in Denmark, and it was the first time that sort of people came back together after being so isolated through the pandemic. And I sang to 1,000 people for his event. I was a guest on his stage. And I sang a song all about healing the world, and I got everyone in the audience to sing the refrain, and it was, come on, heal the world come on heal the world and to beam love from their heart and it was so cool seeing people together um, singing together and that unity that can happen when we come together and actually just from our heart just simply love life and love each other and the world and I think that just I think it's probably one of my most favorite moments in the world and I, I've never really felt like that as an artist and I think after COVID it was that much more amplified there's so many different generations that have, have lived out and put up this stage for us to be in this place now, but it seems like we have become the people that live in the corner of our eye. We're always looking in the corner of our eye to find out, okay, what's coming up behind me? I need to know what's going on. But it's, yeah. it's, it's albums like the one that, that you've released here that give us the opportunity to look forward and instead of looking in the, into the corner of our eye. Yeah, and I, you know that corner of the eye thing, I mean... It's funny, it's funny because there's so many, um, I, I always say that there's so many people making noise right now. Mm -hmm. I think everybody, you know, everybody can be, you know, everyone can use auto-tune or, you know, like <laughs> all of these, these AI and technological sort of advancements. <laughs> everybody can be a singer. But I think the thing that's sort of interesting in these, um, you know, I watched um, Jagged Little Pill, a uh, documentary with Alanis yes. uh, Morissette just, just last night. And it was really cool to just see what she did when you know, she was sort of, she came out like beaming um, out of nowhere and she created sort of this opportunity for new doors to be opened. And I think that's what's happening, I think, in some of these, um, you know, these ways right now in the corner of the eye is seeing things that they didn't even know could happen mm -hmm. in music or in, you know, in writing or, or um, nonfiction, even literature, perhaps. And I think what's happening is we're just going through this renaissance of just the heart has no more ability to just be quiet and silent and that we're going to start living from our heart more than ever. Okay, let's talk about that subject, the heart. I had a heart attack on uh, July 21st, 2009. Um, here's, oh a, here, here's the thing. My doctor looked at me, my cardiologist, and said, your heart never stops growing. So when you talk about the heart, that's the first thing that I thought of was my doctor says, the heart never stops growing. With your artwork, look what's going on. You're filling that new yeah. heart with something very positive. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's really interesting when you get into these, um, you know, the new age sort of movement and like, you know, even Hollywood, I'm very interested in, you know, where the inspiration comes for Hollywood. And I think a lot of times what I'm noticing is Hollywood and new age kind of are coming together. Mm -hmm. And to speak to the point is the fifth dimension is often referred to as the heart. And, you know, I know that I feel very much that the gates of heaven or to the connection of the universe is through the heart. You know, that is where I find God. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting with the heart I believe it's a portal and when you live you know they say the longest journey is from the head to the heart and you know it's the heart where we're born as children and I think you know the kingdom of God so to speak is from the heart and I think we're starting to realize more and more that the heart is where all the magic is and when you live from it you know when you become love expanding love ultimately from the heart what happens is when you have it as the, your compass and the guide that it is it brings you to the next thing that's loving and kind and you do grow you reach and stretch and stretch more you know with that love from one creative person to another the way that you just described that uh, in my heart i felt like your new album is a newborn child now, when you compare it to the older uh, collections of music, do you see their maturity as being the bigger brother or the bigger sister to this new album? 
Yeah, I, I would actually say what I what I kind of realized through this is I said all of the things that I've wanted to say all along, but it's just concentrated. Um, I have a, a Danish friend that sort of um, she was sort of sharing how um, her work is like bullion, you know, like uh, the concentrated sort of uh, bullion stock or whatever. And she, I have to say that that's sort of how I see this this album is sort of like a concentrated version of all of the things I've wanted to share, I think, um, vibrationally with love. So, yeah. <laughs> what What's the interpretation been from those that are receiving the music? Yeah, well, I think ultimately it's a journey, and it's really interesting. Um, I have a couple of uh, songs that I was guided to put on there that are prayers, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting. Like, the angels are listening. Um, the universe is listening. You know, and you start talking about these sorts of ideas, and what's very fascinating to me is, you know, is the universe listening to us? And that's a big question that I had in this album. And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as simple as just asking for help when you need help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you need something or when you feel something in your heart, to not be afraid to ask, you know, the universe for assistance. And I think, you know, the great... if. If we're built in the image of God, so to speak, maybe it's really as simple as just not forgetting to ask for what you need if you need something. And that's sort of this whole album and this whole idea is just, you know, I said everything that I, I wanted to sort of say to the universe through this album. And I think that's sort of the, the, the magic of it, really. I love having these conversations with you because I always think of the, the, the writer hider, the, the writer and the musician that, that will create in the privacy of their own life, but they don't release the art that is growing beyond them. And I want conversations like this to land inside their heart saying, take a chance. I don't care if you sing a little bit out of tune. That means to me that you're human. I love the way that, that you are, you're, you're bringing that universal call to the presentation to, uh, to these listeners in, in the way that take the chance to, because Paul, come on, you, you were not this creative and you were not this spiritual the very first time. I mean, you were there with the first time when we talked, but we also talked about losing your father. You, it, it's been amazing to watch you grow through all of this. And you have been such an amazing teacher to my listeners. Mm. Yeah. I think what's really interesting is I think, you know, it's, it's 12 years later, just to put a timeline on, yes, on the fact that yes. my dad died 12 years ago, literally to this, to this month. And um, I spoke at a suicide awareness event actually last weekend, and I was asked to speak. And it was really, really hard because there was a teenager who had just taken their own life in a very small community. And I was asked to speak, and it's the first time I haven't cried like literally mm. speaking publicly at a suicide awareness event that I was asked to volunteer at. And I realized, I realized actually this morning in preparing, you know, just reflecting about our talk today. Um, and I was thinking about how far I've come in 12 years. And I think, you know, I am really, I think the goal in life is to be your highest self and manifest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's taken me a lot of uh, strengthening and courage to get there because I used to be a scaredy cat of, of a lot of things that I'm not really so scared about. And I think that's growing older. Like, that's what, that's what getting older is all about. And, you know, it takes time and courage comes in little teaspoons. And you just have to, you know, teaspoon by teaspoon, you have to fill up your, your little cup, you know, and the courage eventually gets stronger, you know. So I think that that's sort of what's happened. And I'm doing the best work that I've done, I think right now well yeah. you are a very blessed man where can listeners go to find out more about you your present journey i don't want to say the past because i think the past is always growing but everything that you have brought forward for people to put into their heart yeah well i have eight albums and uh, all of my music's available through all major streaming services so spotify um uh, Apple Music, etc. But my website is bekindness.com and it's bee kindness.com. And that's the idea of pollinating love like a bumblebee. So, <laughs> like the bee. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's don't wait for another pandemic for the next time that we talk. I mean, we both have been yeah, so right. busy. I, I, I understand it, but, but we, we got to talk more, buddy. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in anytime, Arrow. I love you with all my heart. And thank you for all you do. I really, really no, appreciate you. No, thank you for what you do. You're, you're, you're inviting peace into a lot of dark places. And I just, I'm just, I just love you for it. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And to everyone listening, take amazing care of yourself, okay? Be brilliant today, sir. Yeah, you as well. Thanks a lot. <laughs>